Just a little quick review of Shields Plus Shields. Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatory Suit. My regular viewers will know that occasionally I talk about shields and show shields and pretty much, not all of, but pretty much all of the shields that I show are made by a company called Shields Plus. I'll put the link below. And really this is a super quick review just to say I highly recommend them. They're a great business to deal with. Um, they can make 100% authentic style shields. Um, however, most of their shields are made using plywood um, because it's a modern um, practical way to make shields. Um, but first off I'm going to show this so-called heater shield or nightly shield of a sort of, I don't know, 13th, 14th century um, design. Um, and as you can see it's got a diagonal um, straps with a pad behind plywood. Um, they're covered with canvas or something like canvas um, which is folded over at the edge and then um, essentially uh, pinned, um, nailed around the edges uh, with these um, essentially furniture tacks. Um, and the, the quality is just good and the price is good and the service is good. Unfortunately, I have dealt with a lot of makers who make historical replicas of things that are just give rubbish service. But Shields Plus give good, good service and will basically make whatever you want them to make. So obviously if you want to go up a level and make it more complex, make it more historical, whatever, then you can. Or if you just want something uh, cheap off the shelf, then they've got that too. They make everything from um, bucklers through to Norman kite shields, pavises, heater shields, boss held shields, and I'll show, show those in a minute. Um, but let's just have a little quick look at this. So as you can see, um, it's good quality veg tanned um, leather. You could stain that. You could obviously, it comes unpainted. You can get them painted. Um, but I think, you know, part of the fun of getting a shield is actually painting it yourself, assuming you're only good at painting, or you have the facilities to, but assuming you do, that's a good fun thing. That's why this one's white. I have been using this, in fact, I meant to paint it when I first got it, but typical me, I have a million things to do at any one time, and I didn't get around to it, but I have used this lots, and I love it. It's a great shield, it's a great weight. Um, I really like the combination of this particular sort of size, particularly for unarmoured fighting. It's big enough that it protects quite a lot, um, but light enough that you can actually hold it out at arm's length and do a bunch of different things with it as well. It's, um, I think, about eight millimetres thick, something like that, so it's not a specially thick one. Um, I'll talk about historical, like purely historical shields at some point in the future. Just a quick look at a couple of other shields from Shields Plus. So this Boss Grip shield um, that I often show, that is made by Shields Plus, and again, very good, it's got, um, uh, it comes with a um, iron bar handle wrapped in leather, rivets holding the uh, forged iron boss on the front there. I did paint this myself, <laughs> can't take any great pride in that, it's not a great paint job, it was a quick a quick afternoon. Um, the other one is it doesn't have the canvas cover on here and it has instead a leather edging which is um, nailed around the edge to protect against um, sword cuts. Uh, we're not actually sure if that was done historically, uh, there's some evidence for it, but anyway, I'll again, I'll talk about historical shields at another point. So that's another one of Shields, Shields Plus's Shields. Incidentally, this is an impartial review, I bought all of these, I wasn't given any. Um, and finally, the big Norman shield which you're all f familiar with, and this is a really lovely mate, again, I did paint that myself, slightly better than the Anglo-Saxon shield. Um, and this has a guige on it, I'm not going to undo it now, but it has a strap so you can wear the shield, so you could wear it on your back if you're using a two-handed axe or a spear two-handed, like a, a house carl, for example. Or you don't have to wear it. In fact, when you do wear it, it's quite interesting. Um, I might do a video just talking about guiges, actually. Um, it's, it's quite good at just taking the weight off your arms, of just letting it hang there for a bit when you were standing, if you were standing on guard or if you are standing in line of battle and you're not, you're not actually physically fighting at that moment. I find to fight with the Gijon a little bit of a nuisance, which is why you'll notice it's strapped up like this, because I find most of the time when I'm actually using the shield, I prefer to take the Gij off, because then you've got the ability to uh, use it close or use it out at, at will without having this leather strap around your neck kind of annoying you and getting caught on stuff. Um, I also find if you've got a long leather strap here, it can get in the way of weapons as well. Um, and get caught. Um, but yeah, a great, nicely made um, thing. It's got a pad, pad in there again, furniture tax in here. It's, it's not fully historical. I'm completely okay with that. 
For HEMA purposes, what I wanted was different types of shield that were a good analogue, the right kind of weight, the right kind of shape, the right type of uh, gripping um, assembly so that I could use them in the way that they would have been used. I don't care particularly that they're made of plywood. It would be nice to have a fully historical one, but um, maybe I'll get some more historical shields further down the line. But for, um, oh, and why it's got a boss. Lots of people mention, why does your strap shield have a boss? Quite simply because in this period, people went from boss grip shields to strap shields. So we're talking about the 1000s, so the bare tapestry period, the middle of the 11th century. In fact, we do start to see these a little bit earlier at the end of the 10th century. And, um, you know, tradition and all that. Uh, they clearly thought that a shield should have a boss on it, because shields always used to have bosses on them. And so they just made a little boss and put it on there. Does it serve any practical purpose? Uh, you could possibly argue that it might catch certain things which are coming down here, possibly. But by the 12th century, they did away with these. So if they were useful in some way, they clearly weren't very useful or they would have kept them. Um, so I think it's mostly just a tradition thing. They thought that shields should have bosses, so they kept a boss on. Um, anyway, there we go, shields plus shields, link below. Um, they're really good shields, really good value, good service. There's a good variety, and if you want something that's not on the website, they're willing to service that. Cheers, folks.